I'm Robert Bruce Thompson. This is the Home Scientist video series brought to you by Makershed. This is the third of six segments in which we'll show you how to use various methods to reveal latent fingerprints. In the first two segments we looked at iodine fuming and ninhydrin, both of which are used to visualize latent fingerprints on porous surfaces such as paper. In this segment we'll develop latent prints by superglue fuming which is the primary method used to develop prints on glass and similar non-porous surfaces. Like iodine fuming, the discovery of superglue fuming was a happy accident. In the late 1970s, when a Japanese company was testing ways to package superglue, someone noticed that fingerprints on the surface of the container had been developed as white crystalline traces by fumes from the superglue. He mentioned it to someone who mentioned it to someone, and eventually it came to the attention of an American forensic scientist who developed a standardized procedure and introduced it to the forensic science world. You may already have everything you need around the house to do superglue fuming. One possible exception is sodium hydroxide. You can purchase that separately from the Makershed Science Room or another specialty chemical vendor, or you can simply substitute crystal drain opener. Sodium hydroxide is also included in the Makershed Forensic Latent Fingerprint Kit, uh, item number FORKD. The actual fuming process is pretty straightforward. All you need is superglue vapors and some humidity to develop the latent prints. As a matter of fact, if you uh, put an object with latent fingerprints inside a sealed container with some exposed superglue, within 24 hours or so you'll find that the prints have been developed by superglue vapors naturally without you having to do anything special at all. In our case, we want to speed things up a bit, so we're going to use some heat to vaporize the superglue. To provide the humidity, I put some uh, paper toweling in the bottom of the container that we're going to use to do the fuming, and I'm going to pour in just enough water to dampen it. I've made a small aluminum foil boat that we'll use to contain the super glue, and I'll place that in the smaller fuming container. This is a cotton pad that I stole from my wife's makeup supplies. You can also use a cotton ball, basically anything cotton. And here is the object we're going to fume. It's a microscope slide that I handled with my bare hands to put some good fingerprints on. And I'm going to use a small container, one-use container of super glue. And I'm just going to add a drop or two of super glue right there onto the center of that pad. Now, if I just closed up the container, it would actually fume naturally, but I'm going to use what's called chemical acceleration. In this case, I have some dilute 0.5 molar sodium hydroxide, and I'm going to place a small amount of that on top of the superglue, and it should begin to fume pretty quickly. So I'm going to place the lid in place and snap it on. And now, within a few minutes, the fumes in the superglue should coat the latent fingerprints on the microscope slide and they'll be visible as white traces. Okay, it's been about five minutes and I've been lifting the lid of the container every minute or so just to check and see how the fuming progress is going. And at this point, I think it's about done. So let's unseal and extract our specimen. And yes, I'll tilt this side to side because I don't know whether it'll be visible on the video or not but there are a lot of fingerprints with a lot of ridge detail visible as white traces on the microscope slide. So that's all there is to it. You can use this on any glass, plastic, metal, uh, basically any non-porous object and get prints which you can subsequently lift with tape. Uh, you can dust them or you can treat them with various uh, dyes including fluorescent dyes to make them more visible under an alternate light source. As we've seen, superglue fuming is extremely effective for visualizing latent fingerprints on non-porous surfaces, so much so that it's become the default method of choice for such surfaces. 
In many situations, superglue fuming is used alone. In others, it's used in combination with other methods such as after treatment with fluorescent dyes to better visualize developed prints on patterned surfaces. Either way, superglue fuming has become an indispensable tool in the forensic science arsenal. In these first three segments, we've looked at general purpose development methods. In the next segment, we'll take a look at a very specialized method, gentian violet, which is used only for developing latent fingerprints on adhesive surfaces such as sticky tape.